I am doing something I haven't done in a long time. Uh, I, I decided to to try and go through the Git IDEs again, um, at least some of them. There's actually more to do and try to get a sense for how they've evolved and changed. Folks who know me probably know which IDE that I, I sort of got used to using pretty much all the time and, and even pay for. Um, and then that I also at the same time uh, have a very weird workflow where I do a lot of work from the command line. And and part of why I stay sharp on the command line with Git is uh, because I, I like to teach people Git. And so I figure I'd better stay sharp there because I don't know um, what everyone likes to use. So again, my contact information, you can you can follow me on Twitter. My handle is Space Shot just because Chris Gomez is a gold rush on every platform. But ever, I, I may have won the best gold rush of them all because I do have chrisgomez.com. And you can feel free to email me, chris at chrisgomez.com. I, I doesn't matter if it's about this talk or about general Git questions or even anything. Um, if you have any kind of developer question, I certainly am happy to try and help. And I'm a co-host of the Dev Talk Show, which is Wednesday nights at 8.30 US Eastern. So that means if you're not in the US and you don't observe US Daylight Savings Time, you're about to see our time shift in another uh, weekend or two. Um, all of our shows are on YouTube at that YouTube channel, youtube.com slash the dev talk show. Uh, we have that link video dot the dev talk show.com that goes there. So you can watch a replay anytime. We tend to have a chat about 90 minutes, maybe to two hours. Sometimes we have guests. And really, um, after you know, uh, after uh, the start of, of, of us not being able to meet in person in Malvern anymore, Andy Schwamm, Rich Ross, and I decided that if we could have a, a, a chat like we're in the parking lot of old, except with technology, we can also share screens and we sometimes work on code, sometimes look at, at, at sites and, and talk about what we see going on in the, in the different parts of the developer world. You can join us on, uh, on Twitch or YouTube. It actually is also simulcast on Twitter now as well. And we're trying to add to that. We would love to get on LinkedIn. Uh, there's some requirements to get in there. Um, I think that would be pretty good. So this is the last slide, and it's one that I usually show because I think for me, when I first saw it, it's, it's actually kind of a famous XKCD as far as I know. Maybe not the most famous, if, if you do like to follow XKCD, probably not the most famous one, certainly. Um, but it's, it's people talking about Git. This is Git. It tracks collaborative work on projects through a beautiful distributed graph theory tree model. Cool. How do I use it? No idea. Just memorize these shell commands and sync and type them to sync up. If you get errors, save your work elsewhere, delete the project and download a fresh copy, which I think is still unfortunately quite common today. <laughs> um, I, I will tell you, if you know me and you followed me, I, I don't do that anymore. Um, and part of the reason was is getting a very deep understanding of Git. Now, well, I want to be careful when I say very deep. The fact of the matter is I actually have a pretty surface level understanding of Git, but um, I know enough about, about the, the commit graph, and you'll hear me use terms you may hear no one else use, and, and, and commits and, and branches that I'm very comfortable moving around. I'm very comfortable with working with whatever someone else does. I can usually adjust to it and can always adjust to it. Um, so we're not necessarily going to talk about those things today. What I want to talk about is the fact that that we know for a fact that most people use some kind of Git IDE in order to use Git. And in fact, I do too. Um, I don't, you know, I'm not one of those people who insists on doing everything from here. Um, although ironically, you'll probably, if, if you watch me work, you'll see that I will often use a Git tool for the very most basic operations and, and to look at the graph, to look at the commits and how they walk backward in time. And then I'll come out to command line and finish something off. And people find that very strange. And for me, I think it is just because uh, it keeps me sharp in command line. So, uh, you know, command line is one of the GUIs. There's no doubt about it, but we're going to look at some other ones. We are going to look um, at source tree, GitHub desktop, Git Kraken, uh, Tortoise Git, and then the integrated support in Visual Studio Code and Visual Studio IDE. I especially think Visual Studio IDE is pretty relevant here in this audience. 
And um, there's a recognition, I think, that that a lot of a lot of us may may use that now. So actually, what I'm going to do is go ahead and open Visual Studio, and we'll start there. So this happens to be Visual Studio 2022. Um, I can understand that a lot of you may not have Visual Studio 2022, or you may not yet be using it at work. I do know that you're seeing more activity on the Visual Studio blog about updates for Git. Uh, they have come a long way from when Git was integrated into Team Explorer, which was designed for TFS. So if, if you just aren't, weren't involved in the Microsoft platform, when you hear some of these terms from me, that's okay. Knowing the history isn't super important, but just know that Team Explorer was designed for TFS. It worked best with TFS. Originally, there was some Git access moved into that same tab, and um, it wasn't very good. And, and I constantly advised people, my advice was, I just don't think you should use this for Git. I mean, you can, and in fact, you still can because the Team Explorer tab still has the ability to manage connections and connect to Git repositories. But, you know, let's not dwell on that. Instead, there is now more direct Git support. Um, some of it is built right into Visual Studio 2022 in, in places that are visual, where in the past, maybe they weren't, they weren't front and center. So, uh, you know, just in case you don't know, Visual Studio 2022 community is free for limited uses, such as your personal use. Um, I believe the other requirements are they can be used with a team of less than five. And then there's also, I think, a commercial um, revenue uh, limit. Like, you know, if you're if you haven't sold anything, then you you can use it. But but once you get to a certain level, I think you have to move to pro or enterprise. Uh, if you don't know, Visual Studio Community is a is a uh, it is Visual Studio Pro with a different name, so you can use extensions stuff like that. Just remember throughout this whole time, when I do talk about what I perceive to be the licensing for these different things, I'm not your or your workplace's lawyer or license reading professional. I'm sorry about that. So I, I don't. I just want to make sure that if I've gotten something wrong, that that it's not that that you do your own research here. So there is now a full blown Git menu and has been for a little while in Visual Studio. Um, you can go to a repository stored on your system, which you can see I've done that a few times, or you create a Git repository that will be right here locally, or there, there, and actually when you click this, when you click this, uh, let's go ahead and click it. Let's go ahead and click create a Git repository in Visual Studio. They immediately assume that you may want to push this to a remote, like, oh, of course, GitHub or Azure DevOps, right? Uh, this is a theme that you will see in a few of these IDEs is, is a leaning towards, oh, why don't you just go use something that we own? Um, you can add your, you know, if you already are using GitHub, uh, if, if it knows about your GitHub account, if that's linked, which mine is, it's immediately going to help me say, well, where do you want to put this? Do you want to put this? In? And see, I haven't put all the GitHub accounts that I manage here. Uh, what do you want to call this new repository? Uh, do you want to make you the owner? Do you want to make some, a different, maybe a different repository? Maybe not. You can see I'm part of a lot of organizations. Um, I'm part of the Philly.net organization. Maybe you want maybe you want to put it in there. Maybe you want the repository to be in that organization. And then the name and whether or not it's private. You can also fill out stuff for Azure DevOps. Uh, see, I haven't logged in in a while. However, you can also just say, listen, I just want this to be here, as if I typed git init from that location. If you are on another service, you can create a git repository, and then they, they want, again, these, these first three top ones are, are, are ready to go ahead and push. So what you might do, let's say you were in Bitbucket, or maybe GitLab, and maybe it's a hosted GitLab that you have access to here. You can put the URL to that remote here and it'll create the repo and push it out. My personal opinion is that I actually find that myself uh, that I rarely will use this. I will almost always, and I think this is just maybe it's habit. I would love to know what people think here. I think in general, if you're gonna create a repo, you probably log into Azure DevOps or GitHub or Bitbucket 
or you type git init or your own GitLab server, whether it's work or home, whatever. And you probably say create repo there and then you'll you'll clone. That's just how most of most of the time it's done. I'm not trying to say it has to be done that way. I just feel like that's the mechanic that most of us are using. So is that super useful? I don't really know. But um, one thing I can do, which you may or may not be aware of, is instead of using the Git menu, I can come down here to the lower right and say select repository. And there, uh, if, if, the, if it does, if I haven't used the repository, it probably won't be in this list. In fact, as I as I hover over this list in the lower right, I'm seeing it's telling me where it is, and and it even it even repeats because uh well I actually have this repository in two different organizations, so these are repositories that it it knows I've used in the past or maybe they are local. If it doesn't show up in this list, you can click this wonderful hidden menu. Um, you can tell I'm a big fan of that kind of UI, where I can say hey open a local repository, which I'm going to go ahead and do. And I'm going to say I have I, I like to keep my code in a source folder right on the C drive. By default, you're going to find that Visual Studio and a lot of tools want to go stuff it in your user folder really, really deep with a long path. That works. I'm not trying to say that doesn't work. I just kind of like this method. So since this Git puzzles repo, I, I, I know how do I know it's a Git repo? Because I see a hidden dot Git folder. Um, that's not really the only reason. What I really what I want to do is I want to click that and say select folder and boom, it opens in Visual Studio. OK, now, how do I feel about what life is like in Visual Studio? Well, first of all, I'm going to concede to everyone that that is probably not how you're going to open a Git repo. And there's a reason and I and I and I'm going to I took this detour for just a, a quick second. Most of us are probably going to clone a repo out of either Azure DevOps or GitHub or a different tool that, that we're using at our jobs. We're gonna open the solution and then Visual Studio just automatically picks up everything that has to do with Git, okay? So the fact that I've done things this way is a little unusual, I think. I don't think most people would do this. For one thing, my Solution Explorer, Explorer is a folder view that shows me the files I've worked on. This is not a Visual Studio solution um i can use this i can go to work i can start working and let me just add like a fake little comment here just by just by simply adding that comment oh i accidentally goofed a little bit but that's okay if i go to get changes i'm now going to see that on the right hand side it's saying hey i noticed you changed this that does not mean that it has staged this um which is Git, Git has always had this intermediate staging step where you take a file, you stage, you stage the version of that file as it is at the moment you stage it. Uh, and there's even more complex operations, but let's not worry about those. And then you commit. Git has always had a staging area. That helps you in a lot of different ways. One of them could be that maybe you're working on multiple things, but you know for sure you want to get this file or these, this set of files changes pushed up. So you can just stage those, commit them, and, and then move on. That's one one use there. Um, I'm actually planning to move. I want to move off of this. One of the things I like to do is look for the history of the repository, and I'm not really seeing it. Uh, I don't see a, a simple way. I'm not seeing any kind of, of really great UI for this, in my opinion. I can right click and view the history of this file. I can go back to that folder view and do the same thing. I have I have a git view history now it doesn't mean you can't do it it just means that i found myself going to the git menu and saying view branch history and view branch history for me was the log i was looking for uh this log is okay uh, i don't think it's that great it is showing me this the the pointers to each branch the branches so trunk branches here um, they use this interesting terminology they're not wrong the head for the more equipment branch the head for this branch the head for the trunk branch I have always preferred to think of um, to think of branches as sticky notes. And so if any of you are familiar with post-it notes, right, I might have a pad of post-it notes. And really all Git does when I make a new branch is, is I say, hey, I'm I'm here on trunk right now. This is this is where I'm working. I'd like a new branch. And so Git says, okay, fine, takes out its pen, writes out a new sticky note, tears it off, and then pastes it right on the commit. 
there can be as many as you want there. And and I use that metaphor because I think it's a, a better representation of what Git's actually doing with a branch. It's not remembering the entire history. It's just remembering a commit. And then it can walk that history back because every commit knows its parents. Um, the parent of a commit is known to each commit. That's not really listed all that well here. There is this go to parent, go to child. Uh, I didn't think this was that great because I'm here and I have two parents from this commit. I have one parent here, updated title, and then I have another parent. And I don't like how, how all these tooltips are popping up and getting in your way. The other parent is here. So when I say switch to parent, go to parent, which one do you pick? Well, it picks that one. Okay. I mean, both of the parents are equally valid as far as Git is concerned. So I, I find this to be kind of okay. Uh, I'm not, you can hear I'm not a big fan. There are some buttons up here, whether or not I want to show branches on the remote, which is, oh, I like that I can can show and hide some stuff. I wish I had more ability here. Um, show first parent only. I did not like this button at all. And I have had a hard time figuring out why I would want it. Um, finally, there is a simple view. This view will look more familiar to you if you type git log at the command line or if you go up to GitHub or even really Azure DevOps, their, their default log view is one at a time. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of this view because you've probably, you're probably hearing me drive home the fact that, that git is a graph and that graph diverges, especially when we merge a commit up where, and we're merging two or more branches and we're creating a new merge commit that represents the child of those operations. I like to see that. I, th I think that's really useful for me. Um, I think, unfortunately, like I said, wow, time's really moving. We're already 20 minutes in. So unfortunately, I'm going to move on very quickly. And, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up GitHub Desktop. I have a feeling that what I, where I'm heading with this is a series of YouTube videos, quite frankly. Uh, but I, I wanted to try this out. So GitHub Desktop is from GitHub. Um, a very long time ago, this was my preferred IDE. And the funny thing about it is it wasn't even because I really liked it that much. It was because it used to come with a fully, uh, fully installed uh, posh Git PowerShell shell. And, and then I realized that I didn't need that anymore. So uh, I hope I'm not giving away the ending, but I'm not the biggest fan of GitHub desktop. Now I can give you I, some of the things that's really difficult here is when I installed these things, there were first time user experiences. So I just wanna let you know what they are. I didn't capture them. I think it would be a great idea to capture them and get those into a video. Um, so GitHub Desktop is free. Uh, when you first sign up, it asks you to sign in with GitHub, but there is a link at the bottom that lets you skip it. Can you open any kind of repository? You can, you can say clone repository and it's, it's pushing you to GitHub by saying sign in. It's also saying, look, if you've got a URL, okay, I'll take that. And this will work with a Bitbucket or even your or GitLab at work. What you might find is that you'd better have all the authentication set up separately, uh, including like, let's say at work, they require SSH. You're gonna want that set up separately. Um, my biggest problem with GitHub Desktop is that they only show this history. I, I cannot find any way I looked and I looked and I said, am I just wrong that there is no commit graph? There is no view of the graph. And that really, really bothers me. Now, um, I say that because I, I just feel that as a developer, and I, I, am, I am far from the person who thinks everyone should master Git the way I know it. I actually don't believe that because I think that's a little too, um, it's a little too much like saying like if you don't do it my way it's terrible. I don't I don't want to be that way. But I do think that that seeing the graph is so useful. Now, were there features that I that I liked here? Uh, you know, it's okay in that like it knows that this is modified and without even with a, without oh wait, I didn't stage back in Visual Studio, did I? I don't think I did. Okay, so this is not staged. And uh, we didn't even look at that. So by default, Visual Studio does not stage. I could push this plus button and now it's staged. If you're familiar with Git, then, then just the fact that I staged it means I can do a Git status and 
and it shows me, oh, this changes to be committed. And then if I remove it from the stage, unstage, then I go back to just see like, okay, not not staged. Uh, this may be new to you to see that for most of these tools, it's okay to swap around. You don't have to worry too much about what happens here, what happens there, uh, or how much have I messed things up. I wanted to make sure that wasn't staged because over here in GitHub Desktop, without even talking about staging, they're willing to let me just, you know, uh, commit a comment here, right? And and write a description and commit. Um, I am not against that. You can do that in Visual Studio as well. I just think that it's really helpful to, to, to at least try to learn as soon as possible about the staged area because you may find it extremely useful to say, hey, I only want this file or that file. Um, I, I'm Perhaps I'm working on the, uh, maybe I'm working on a website and I've done a bunch of work on the HTML, CSS, but I, I also have a bunch of work, maybe it's a Blazor site. And and I've got a pro, uh, a feature I'm in progress on that's in the C sharp code, but I don't want to mix the two streams. This is ready to go, so you know you stage those separately. And and I'm not I'm not getting that as a first class easy uh, citizen here, right? Um, I I find GitHub Desktop to be my least favorite IDE. I I think it's I think that there's nothing i don't have anything against how they kind of push you towards github although oddly enough you make a local repository here when you clone they make it super easy to get from github or from your github enterprise at work and this is kind of painful um you want to you want to go to a different repository i don't i mean it's okay you can come up here and click and pick a different one that you're working on it's not my favorite interface. I don't think Visual Studio helps me much here either. Although Visual Studio, I will give Visual Studio a little bit of credit in that Visual Studio is trying to give you a solution-oriented view, which I never really showed. Um, in fact, I think what I'll do... Let me see if I can get something started just to show that off. The ASP.NET Core solution. This is This is the actual ASP.NET Core app. Uh, I'm not sure that it fully works in Visual Studio 2022 because it, it screamed and yelled at me about some things. But let's let's go back to GitHub Desktop. So, um, you know, a lot of people might be wondering, like, how does it handle things like merge conflicts? We're going to create a merge conflict, hopefully in a little bit, and view how all these different IDEs look at it. Um, then, but what I, I do need to do is get another one going. Maybe maybe I picked too many for this, and and I apologize if I it off a little bit more than I can chew here. But let's see. I think a lot of people use source tree. Um, I run into it a lot. Um, a lot of people that I work with or maybe encounter use it. And and I I this is where things are getting better in my opinion. I am not unhappy with source tree. Uh, I like how source tree shows me a, a walk down of the commit graph. I don't think it's the best one. Um, but it's not bad. I like that I can start hiding things. Like I can say, hey, let me see what's going on up at the remote, which there isn't much more yet. Uh, we'll add to that in a little bit. Um, I can say, do I want to see all branches? And so now I have, and look, I have this other branch, my season tickets branch here that didn't show when I was in current branches. I like features like that that let me focus on on what am I currently working on. I wish it was a little more powerful, but it's okay. Um, what were some of the other things I noticed here? I noticed that adding a remote is supported, but it's not where I thought it would be. So what's adding a remote? Um, I don't know how well I'm going to be able to cover this, but if you work on open source projects, you know, in an open source project, you are not going to, um, you are not going to get access to the project. It's not like work. The way we work with Git at work is fundamentally different from the way it works in the open source world. At work, you probably all share one repository. And when I say share, I mean you all clone from it. So that's your origin remote and you push branches up to it, even branches of your own. You might even use a convention like that's being used here, which uh, I've used at many places where you make, you make branches let me see if i can zoom in 
No, that didn't work. Do I not? Oh, do I not have Zoom it going? Oh, I may not have Zoom it installed. What a what a catastrophe. Um, so where at work you tend to uh, at work you tend to all have the you all clone from the same place you all publish branches the same place and you might differentiate your branches maybe with a user slash username slash branch if you've never seen that before just by naming your branch with slashes and I mean I don't mean the Windows backslash I mean the slash under the question mark then most IDEs will 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 turn that into a folder structure and I actually think that's helpful um, especially in the work environment where you know you might end up having dozens of people starting to create these user branches and you want to get them out of the way quickly or not have to look at them all okay fine in the open source world you're not going to get access to the asp.net core ide you're going to fork it which is a which is the github term for give me my own copy of the repository in my account that i'm the owner of and then you'll use pull requests to say hey pull from my branch over here uh it's a different model but when you're in that isolated open source model, you don't see all the work everybody else is doing, at least not generally. Uh, and, and so it's kind of nice to be able to hide that. And I don't find a very powerful hiding feature here. Um, I can say, don't show me the remote branches. Show me the remote branches. OK, see, I see some from other users. OK, fine. Or just show me the current branch. OK, OK, this isn't bad. You're going to see it's not my best it's not my best in feature um i do like that there are separations for pull push and fetch when i run back to visual studio i will tell you that i am not a fan at all of the sync buttons that you're seeing in different apps and the reason why is because a sync is a pull and push so um at work i would hope that your colleagues are not committing directly to your trunk or your main I hope that's true. Um, however, you might be behind. You might be behind main, which is not the end of the world. It's just that your sync is going to, without your knowing, it's going to pull in commits and it's going to try to merge yours and then it's going to try to push them. And that you could end up with a merge conflict you weren't ready for, which is which is not the end of the world. You are you do have a conflict, but you may feel like, oh gosh, I now I'm in some funky state and I don't know how to back out. I don't know how to abort this. And are you back to the XKCD comic again? So I tend to be a big fan of trying to get everything correct locally before, and then I'll go look at the graph. I'll do a fetch and look at the graph. Um, source tree, I, I I don't remember if source tree, because the problem is, yes, here we go. So source tree, when you click fetch, brings up a little menu that says, hey, do you want to fetch from all the remotes? And a lot of times you're just going to have origin. Um, do you want to get rid of brand? This is a great statement. Prune tracking branches no longer present on remotes. That is a grammatically correct get statement. And if you don't know what it means, I don't blame you. What it means is, is if there are branches over in your main repository, what a lot of us will refer to as up on the server, or we might say out on GitHub or out on Azure repos at work. If those branches have been deleted, then can you get rid of them here too? A common use case for that is if you if your organization always pull re, pull requests by branch, that branch may get deleted when the pull request is merged. And then you just have all this cruft in your local Git repository so you can prune. If you're looking for a command line way to do that, that is, uh, I just did it recently, that is git remote prune, and then the name of the remote could be origin. Um, so that's exactly what this is. All right. Yeah, it's cruft cutting, right? So <clears throat> what I want to do before I come back and try to look at individual things is I want to bring up what a lot of people will know is my favorite uh, Git IDE. And, and you know, I, I tried to be very fair when I looked at every IDE, but I will admit you're going to see me go right to it is in Git Kraken's and its view of the commit graph. So one thing you might already notice is that this commit graph is only showing the trunk. Oh, and the other thing I love about Git Kraken is I can, since, I don't know if this is a good or a bad thing. Um, there we go. Is since they used Electron, I can zoom in for a presentation or a screen share and then zoom out for normal work. So I don't know whether or not you like Electron. 
<laughs> that's not the point of it. It's that at least you get a little bit of a web view, view zoom in and out. So what happened to all the, the actual tree? Well, the actual tree looks more like this in this particular case. This is the real commit graph. This is really what's happened all the way back from the initial commit. You can see there's been some merging. Once upon a time, there was a branch called survey work, but that branch is no longer here. Uh, there's another person that's working and adding and creating problems. And, and I can see all of this. And I also get this really good view that, that a branch is just pointing to a commit. Like it's really obvious that little faint line is telling me that index dash PR is just pointing to this commit. And if I want to know the history of it, I can walk it back. I can just walk it back. The parents are listed here. I can click on any commit and see, oh yeah, it had two parents and it shows those parents as first class. I really like that. But man, I don't want to see all this stuff. I don't really care what Jay Jenko is working on. So if I go to this remote and I hide the Jay Jenko stuff, it's out of my way. And I'm not really working on this season ticket holder um, feature right now. So let me get that out of the way. Uh, in fact, I, I don't really care too much that that there was a pull request to update the index. So you're going to notice that when I when I make this, I hide this, that nothing happens. Nothing happened. Not to the graph, but it's just because the pointer to this commit went away, but it doesn't make the pointer less uh, part of the graph. That gra that that particular graph is still being walked backward from trunk. It's still being walked backward from more equipment. Um, if I went the other direction and I made this index PR uh, feature branch visible, but which I'd have to check it out, which is okay. I can check it out and then make the others invisible. Now in a weird kind of way, well, what happened to trunk? What happened to stuff further out? Well, I'm focused on this. And when I commit here, I'm going to be diverging away from this other work, but that's okay. I can remain focused on this particular branch and its history and not worry about other branches history. Um, I'm going to go ahead and check out the trunk again, which will kind of bring that back to life. And, uh, and, and then the other thing that I think it really illustrates is let's say I want to create a branch here. I create a new branch trunk. So I just create it. It doesn't really matter what I call it. What I love about how Git Kraken, Kraken shows this is it's the way Git thinks. Here's a little sticky note pointing to this commit of a hash DDA604, but trunk is pointing there too. They're both stuck to the same commit. And if I reset ABCDEF, which I can do very nicely in the Git Kraken IDE, you can do this in other IDEs too, but let me just reset it here. I don't care where I reset it. By being checked out, right-clicking on a commit and saying reset, I also have access to all three types of reset, hard, mixed, or soft, which unfortunately I can't really get into here, but but I'm going to just go ahead and say a hard recess. Pick that branch up and slap it there and just pretend like this is what I really wanted. Um, I love that question. Is it just me or is Git way more complicated than TFS? Uh, the answer I think is yes and no, and I will definitely try to get to that. And I, I, I kind of apologize that this is not really a Git beginners uh, or a Git foundational talk which I do like to give. Um, they're very hard to do in an hour. Uh, there's another talk later today about Git internals. Um, I've done a similar talks, but I'm really looking forward to this talk because I think it's it's really nice. Now, you it may feel a little over your head, but I would, I would definitely try to go to it or, or watch the video. Um, so is Git complicated? My, my answer is that it is and it isn't. I actually think it's quite simple. There's, there's well, I shouldn't, I don't mean it that way. What I mean is there's an elegance to the fact that that commits in Git are on this graph that go backwards in time. That is immutable. That can't be changed. It's the fact that branches can point to any commit is what starts to make it feel complicated. Um, the fact that I was able to pick this branch up and just move it where I wanted, I actually find quite elegant. For example, I can just reset here. And why is that useful? Why is that useful? Well, what if I was here on the trunk and, oh, you know what? I, uh, let me go back to the trunk. What if I was here on the trunk and I forgot to create a new feature branch and I went ahead and committed? Well, I haven't bothered anyone else yet. So if I can do that really quickly without getting bogged down, 
Oh, I didn't even look at Visual Studio Code yet, did I? Here in index HTML, I'm just going to make a quick commit, quick comment. And so this is Visual Studio Code's 13 minutes. And in Visual Studio Code, by default, you get this source control view, which is OK. I'm going to stage it, and I'm going to say uh, added HTML comment. OK, I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to commit it, which here's a commit button in Visual Studio Code. I'm going to commit that. That's done. They have this one sync changes button, which I'm not thrilled with. But if I come over here, I can use the git commands that are more like real git commands. So it's just I'm, a sync is going to push one up. That's what it's telling me with the one up. But let me just click push. It pushes it. I'm going to head back to git kraken now. And I uh, did it do it. Should have done it. Why? Hold on a second there. What did I do wrong? Yeah, added HTML comment. So here it is. Here it is. Git Kraken is showing that. If this happened to me at work, and I would like, I don't know if this has ever happened to you. You know that you're supposed to create a branch to start your work, but you forgot. You got so excited, you just went and did your work. I know plenty of people who have told me, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I copy this out and I get it reclone. And it's like, wow, how painful. Because branches are just sticky notes, why don't I tell Git to just, write up a new sticky note for me and slap it right on the commit. I do that by creating a branch. I right click, I say create branch here. Let's call this feature branch uh, HTML work uh, just to show you that it's different. And now both branches and are pointing to the same place. And these are only local branches and Git Kraken shows you that with this wonderful laptop looking icon to tell you. This is the local branch, my own copy of the repository. I haven't messed things up for anyone else yet. Now what I can do is I can check out trunk by double clicking. And then I can say, well, trunk is supposed to be here. And how do I know that? Let me make trunk visible on the remote. This is where trunk is on GitHub with the little icon representing the GitHub user that owns the, uh, owns the uh, remote, right? Owns the server. Well, uh, oh wait, I pushed it, didn't I? Ha, <laughs> I made a mistake. I didn't mean to push it. Let's go, let's go back and do that again in Visual Studio Code. I should not have actually pushed that change. What I should do, so I made a mistake there. Since I pushed that change, of course it's up to date. Now you might be asking, how do I fix it on the remote? Which you can do, um, but it, it, that, that's not what I meant to show you and I apologize there. So let's add a second comment. This was the use case that I was trying to show. I was trying to show that I committed and let's, uh, yeah, just to commit. Oh, no, I got to stage it. Oh yeah, a lot of people accidentally in Visual Studio Code say always, and now your changes are always staged and I'm not a big fan of that. So, okay, I haven't, I haven't pushed that commit up. I made a mistake there, but I realize, oops, trunk is supposed to be back here oh my gosh i messed up like i messed up again well it's no big deal let me check out let me move feature branch i'll just move it first i got to check it out check out this html work that's supposed to be here so i'll just pick it up and move it with a reset hard moved done and then oh um i messed up trunk is really supposed to be here so let me check out trunk and move it back to where it was with a reset hard done I made the extra mistake of accidentally pushing up a commit I didn't mean to. If this really happens to you at work, there is a way out of it. You might want to double check that your your rest of your colleagues, if you're quick enough about it, have not gone ahead and committed on top of that commit. But what I can do, and I know everybody's, you know, you probably don't have access to do this on the trunk. On your trunk or main, I hope you don't have access to do this. You might have to get somebody with administrative privileges to say, can we can we reset trunk back? I messed up. I did not mean to move it. I, I made a mistake. And Git lets me move that up on origin. And so everybody else who's working on top of that with their feature branches, or maybe they're going to commit something, they don't get they don't get messed up. In subversion in TFS, when when you create a branch, if you were if you had forgotten to create a branch and you pushed up to to the main branch, now granted you probably have some kind of branch protection, but if you don't, that's there, that's done. There's nothing you can do. There's no local copy that you can say, "Whoops, I made a mistake." 
Um, I understand that it's a different model. Like TFS is a centralized model, right? And and this isn't. So uh, you can see one of the things I liked about Git Kraken is I could just reset stuff very quickly. It's not that you can't do that in other ones. Source tree has that support. In source tree, I can grab a branch that I'm checked out on. In fact, let me go ahead and check out feature branch. And then I could say, well, I really wish it was here. I can reset. I have options. There are things I can do. It's not that you can't do these things. Source tree is a good alternative. Um, it shows a decent graph. I, I just happen to really like how in, how here I can be very granular about what I take out of my view. I can even do that with tags, which I am not showing you. Um, but what I really like to do is show you a merge that goes wrong. So uh, let's let's look at how that would look. Let me let me switch back to the trunk branch, and I don't care about that feature branch anymore. And um, what should happen now, I believe, I added the git ignore, is let me go ahead and I have another user that's going to, they're going to update the tree. I got to get this done in this the next couple minutes. It turns out that Git demos can be a little complicated because you actually really do need another live user. Even if they're if they're pretend. You need another user. OK, so now that I've done that, let's see. Did I get my branch to push that up by now? But some. Um, Okay, so the new branch is there. Yes, no. No, here it is. Here it is, okay. So that branch is there. And then let's go ahead and say, say. Sorry about this. So this isn't exactly the most exciting television there. OK, so here I am on the trunk and I need to merge in this change equipment. I need to merge that in. So from the command line, if I'm on trunk, I could say git merge change equipment. I could do that. If I'm in source tree, I can say, see, I'm on the trunk. And I find this a little bit. Uh, I need to show remote branches. Are they showing? Here it is, change equipment. I, I want to merge that in. I click merge and it says, are you sure you want to merge? Yes. And it's like, oh, you have merge conflicts. OK, you can do this by selecting the conflicted files and using the options under the resolve conflicts menu. OK, well, so then I said, now what the heck are you trying to tell me there? And and uh, <laughs> what did it say again? I did not find it to be the best experience. It said merge. You now have merge conflicts. Select the conflicted files using the options under the resolve conf conflicts menu, which I know was here. Wow, now I can't even find it. That's not good, right? Like that's already, unfortunately, here we go. The resolve conflicts menu. So it's like what you have to do is go out and resolve them you can you can hook up merge tools to do it. OK, let's go take a look at how Visual Studio Code does. Well, at least Visual Studio Code immediately recognized that there is a merge conflict to deal with, and it gives you the Git style way of doing it. In Git merge conflicts, what Git does is it writes into this file. It just writes into it and says, hey, here's the current change and here's the incoming change. Your job in Git, as far as Git is concerned, is is if you get rid of their little cruft and you make the file however you want and then commit that they're good commit git is good you could delete the whole file as far as git is concerned um most ides are going to offer you this option to accept a change do you want the current change do you want the incoming change do you want both changes do you want to compare them side by side and what's happening here is is i'm adding a line to the same place where lines were already added so so git looks at that and the Visual Studio Code IDE, which I will give them credit. It just popped right up. If I head over to uh, 
if I head over to get changes in, oh, I'm in the wrong project now I'm, because I started up that ASP.NET one. Let's bring up GitHub Desktop. GitHub Desktop does detect it. It says, hey, you got to resolve a conflict for this merge, and it offers to open Visual Studio Code. Okay, like that's not horrible. It's just that, well, I already had Visual Studio Code. Um, Git Kraken says, listen, I found a file conflict when I tried to merge, and they bring up here a view conflict. And what you can do is you might have more than one conflicted file. Here I have one, and it brings up this interface, which you will see in other places. It brings up this interface where it says, okay, do you want what's on the A side? Do you want what's on the B side? Or do you actually kind of want both? And if I click both, see, it doesn't quite get right what I want. So what I can do for this, this particular case is I can say, well, I really do want goal, goal net, and scoreboard. And I also want referee. I can go line by line and I'm seeing what my output is going to be at the bottom. And then I can go to each conflict that it knows about. It's taken out gets it's taken out gets um, little head and origin equipment change. If you don't believe me that that's how this file actually looks, you know, we can go to notepad index.html and what this is going to show you is that Git really has written that stuff in here. And what it wants you to do is it wants you to fix this and then commit it again. Tools hide that from you. Uh, not all of them, but a lot of tools do. So if I go to Git Kraken and I say, this is what I really wanted. I want this line from here and these lines from here and get rid of the head stuff. Then you say save and Git Kraken automatically stages it. And it even shows you, it's like, here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to commit. And you can write a commit down here. Um, if I go out to the Git command line and just look at the status, Git knows about it. It says, yeah, you've got a change to be committed. The conflicts are fixed, but you're still in the middle of merging. If you commit, we will conclude the merge. So I'm sorry that that took us right up to 1050. There is a lot <laughs> to do with different IDEs. This was this is not intended to be a Git Kraken commercial, and 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 the reason why is I'm not Git Kraken has some kind of VIP program. I am not one of those. I pay for Git Kraken. I have never asked them for anything. A couple of years ago, I found that I really liked it, so I bought it. If I by owning it, I am allowed to use it on publicly on private repositories, which means repositories at work. You may use Git Kraken on any publicly available repository for no charge which means if you just want to try it out on a GitHub or Bitbucket repository that's that's open to the world, you are allowed to do that. And you can give it a try. Um, Source Tree is free, and and I actually think Source Tree is a good alternative. Uh, I, I do not recommend GitHub Desktop, and um, I actually would recommend that you maybe consider trying to get out of the Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code ones as soon as possible. Visual Studio Codes is okay, um, it's a little bit better with extensions. There's an extension called Git Graph that I installed that allows me to look at this graph. This is okay. You can actually say, hey, you know, I really don't want to see all the branches. I really just want to see a couple of them. That's kind of nice. That's that's kind of a nice feature. Um, I don't know that it's as, as, as elegant as my favorite. There's also Git Lens, which I disabled. I, I was hoping to get to it, but I didn't. So Git, it turns out that Git Lens used to be independent and now is is worked on I, at least I think it used to be independent I could be wrong about that it's now published by the Git Kraken folks um Git Lens will make your experience feel a little bit more like Visual Studio's experience where it will start dropping stuff into into hints and so on it'll show you like who worked on things okay fine um but but that's it that's a, my unfortunately way too short tour just because we ran out of time um I think what you might find is that I uh, very well much, we may cover this on the Dev Talk Show in more detail. Next week on the Dev Talk Show, we are actually going to talk about Git, it turns out. Um, so if you wonder about what we're doing on the Dev Talk Show, we have a meetup. And the easiest way to find us is by searching for the Dev Talk Show and just seeing what our next meetup is. Um, hopefully, I think we'll get all of this stuff on, on, visual, on philly.net's philly.net's website we'll try to get these videos all posted i know you may want to start heading to your next one but we still got a few minutes and it's pretty 
it's a pretty um pretty instant move so if you want to stay here and ask a couple final questions i'm fine with that i've got a great comment here in visual studio if there is a change of a file under a folder i'd like to see an icon on that folder level to indicate that a file inside of that folder has been changed so far i don't see it is there a plugin um let's go take a look most of us use visual studio we don't use it the this way we use the solution view which is here no here this is the way that most of us are going to use the visual studio git we're not going to do what i did earlier which is like go pick some random files like that's just not realistic so the question is if i were to change a file which i'm i don't care about doing there's a little lock here, that little lock icon. Let me just go change this file. And again, I don't really care that this isn't valid because we're just we're just playing around. You do get you do get this plus, but I understand your point. The point is you want to see it at this level, okay? And we're not seeing that. So is there an extension? I'll tell you what. This sounds like a wonderful opportunity for me to go look or maybe even to write a little git ex a little extension that does this it sounds like a small thing but i've always been looking for an excuse to dive into visual studio extensions especially because mads christensen has a, a ton of great mads christensen sorry yes i'm right about that mads christensen has a ton of great content on youtube and so on he even he even does streams where he he basically demonstrates himself writing extensions in visual studio extensibility i think you're right i think you're right I think there should be some indication. And it's funny that now that you mention it, I keep asking myself, did it used to do that? And I don't know. I don't know. So um, there certainly is a lot that I did not get to here. And uh, it gives me pause as to, as to how to best go about this in the future. But I appreciate you all. Um, giving me a chance to try this out, to try in an hour, 50 minutes, uh, going over different Git IDEs. I, I think I can definitely, I practiced this a couple of times and realized that I still got very scattered. I think it could be better. Um, uh, the SVN plugin does that for Visual Studio. I believe that. Or even maybe there is no plugin anymore. I'm not sure. Um, or even the TFS built-in stuff. Uh, when I say TFS, do I mean... Gosh, TFS, <laughs> if you use the TFS control, source control in Azure DevOps, do you get that? I wonder. <laughs> I don't know the answer. It just feels like one of those things that you think, boy, I should know. But um, if you probably have guessed, I don't. I may work in Visual Studio all day long, and then I will have this open. It might seem weird, but I tend to come here and say, let me see what's going on. What do I have to change? What do I have to commit? What's my work in progress? Things like that. Um, it, I, I understand we didn't get to a lot of other things that these different tools can do. But in my opinion, uh, Git Kraken and Source Tree are very good about having one-to-one. -one. Like when you right-click on something, it's doing one thing in Git. Pretty good about that. Visual Studio Code has some of those options, but they're hidden a little bit. I didn't really like how Visual Studio is really pushing you to commit and sync. And if you want to do more, like maybe you just want to fetch instead of pull, you pick this little extra menu and then it's like, well, where's fetch? Where's fetch? Oh, it's under pull and push. Well, I didn't know that. And then sync. Oh, sync really, it really bugs me. And I know people get like, they wonder like, why, why? And it's well, when you've had that one time where, where a bunch of stuff changed on, on an important branch, like maybe even the trunk, and you tried to sync with it, and then you found out that you were like in this weird merge conflict, like purgatory, and you accidentally commit so something someone else removed as a bug fix because you're syncing, right? You're saying, wait, I want you to sync up my version of the code with that version of the code. The first time you do that, you tend to stop using the sync button. Um, so in any case, we're going to talk about it more on Wednesday. This coming Wednesday, 8.30 p.m. Join us on the Dev Talk Show. I'd, we'd love to see you be regulars there. Don't hesitate to reach out to me. Don't hesitate to tweet at me. Um, would love to continue this conversation. And maybe, maybe at a future Code Camp, uh, we'll do something else with Git. 
and don't hesitate to see the 12 o'clock today. I think it's going to be a good one on how Git internals can help you. I think they'll they'll make you feel fearless about Git. Just understand the internals, understand the immutability, immutability of a commit. A commit is a snapshot of your whole entire repository. It is not just the changes. Understand how how branches are pointers to commits. That that, that I, I find that to be pretty helpful. It, it was what really helped me with my understanding. I'm going to stop for a second. If anybody wants to unmute or ask a final question or get to your next session, I totally get it. I am going to go ahead and stop the recording and thank everybody again.